near the costa, near the costa, near the costa, near the costa, near the costa. Near the Costa's Candyman follows artist Anthony, who, desperate to find some inspiration, discovers the urban legend of the Candyman and paints a piece that unwittingly brings him back into the public eye as more and more people begin to dare say his name. Now, before I begin, if you're a film fan like myself, do consider subscribing to this channel and let me know what you think of Candyman down in the comments below. But yes, Near the Costa's Candyman is effectively a sequel slash reboot to the original movie, very much in the vein of Halloween 2018, as it follows up the original story, but ignores the follow-ups. And it works really well, in my personal opinion. Now, of course, Candyman has always been a symbol of gentrification and other social issues in the black community, which I am in no way qualified to speak about. So I encourage you to seek out other reviewers and be feel free to give them a shout out in the comments below as well. They can give a more thoughtful insight into that aspect of the movie. But as a horror movie and cinematography and just filmmaking elements and story, well, that I can talk about. So first of all, Neither Costa is directing the absolute hell out of this movie. The cinematography, for one, is absolutely fantastic. The way this film utilizes mirrors and reflections is outstanding i love how the kills use these mirrors and reflections to great effect and this modern take on the tale and just the updated modern graphics and special effects really help this film stand out because the kills in this are absolutely brutal this film is not for the squeamish there are definitely some very harsh moments that feel like they are really towing that line as close as they absolutely can there's a certain decapitation that takes place at some point in the movie that is a bit too much, but it was absolutely glorious. have to give a big shout out to the special effects people in this movie because there is some outstanding work on display. Our lead character, Anthony, who is our primary connection to the Candyman, he goes through a transformation throughout this movie and the way his skin changes and develops across the movie, it is haunting horrifying but does look realistic and it just shows the path that he is going down now there are some problems with this movie for one the third act is a bit of a mess now i'm not saying it's a complete catastrophe of third act but it requires a leap from a certain character that while there are certain underlying moments of this character's jump it just seemed to come out of the blue and there was no real transition. Ali Kat Anti, played by Yaya Abdul Mateen II, he is a character that, while is a good focal point to follow throughout the film, I couldn't really get into his whole exploration. He goes from this very adventurous painter to what he becomes in the latter half, seemingly randomly, and it's hard to tell the exact point where his mind blends in with the Candyman. There is also another scene in this that featured very prevalently in the trailers that show the character I like thought was going to be of bigger and larger involvement, but they ended up just not being involved in the film at all. In fact, this big scene that is spoiled in the trailer is kind of just there to up the body count. I can't think of any reason why it exists. I mean, you could argue that it's there to show the spreading influence of Anthony's art piece influencing other people to summon the Candyman and therefore causing his reign of terror to continue. But for me, it was a scene that, while expertly shot, unapologetically squeamish and just graphic in the long run, I don't think the film really needed it and it just really felt like it was trying to up a kill count of sorts. There are some positives in this though. Anthony's girlfriend and her brother are two standouts in this. Fiona Paris, for example, is brilliant as this character is just in denial about what's going on and just the slow descent into their finale is very well done and very well played out. And they're also one of the cleverest people in the horror movie histories. You know when you see in Scream where they parody stuff and say this is how you get killed? She very much has one of the moments where she begins to do something as like, nope, just does the smart. It's just nice to see a character do the smart thing in a horror movie. 
But yeah, Nina Costa directed the absolute hell out of this movie. And I know some people are arguing, why not credit Jordan Peele? Yes, Jordan Peele is producing and just co-write it. But if we gave producers credit for every film they ever made, then would you really care about the directors? Fun fact, a producer on every single Michael Bay Transformers movie was Steven Spielberg. But you wouldn't call it Steven Spielberg's Transformers, would you? That is my take on that side. But overall, Candyman, despite a messy third act and some characterizations and leaps in logic when it comes to characterizations not working, some characters are really strong. The gore is unapologetically brutal and the cinematography is gorgeous. I can't express enough how much I love the way they played with reflections and how they utilized them reflections in the actual kills. It gave us some very unique kills in the horror genre. There's one specific kill that is amazing to watch. I know it's bad to say that because it is quite a brutal death, but the way it is shot, it just puts things into perspective. Like someone could be meters away from you dying and you wouldn't have an absolute clue about it. That's all I'm going to give away about that particular death. Overall, for me, I'm going to have to say that Candyman is a film that ironically needs more sugar. <laughs> So Candyman, have you seen it? Let me know what you thought out in the comments below. Let me know if there are any reviewers that you feel like can shed light into the subtext on the movie because I'd love to check them out. I, well, I'm about to get catching up with everyone else's reviews, but got to get mine out first before I start getting my ideas influenced by other people. But yeah, if you are new to this channel and you love movies as much as I do, again, subscribe to the channel, drop a like button, let me know your thoughts in the comments. And until next time, my name is Josh. I have been your movie apprentice and I'll see you in the next.